Roy Sullivan was born in 1912 in Greene County in central Virginia, today home to just a shade over 18,000 people. He was the fourth of 11 children and lived in the Blue Ridge Mountains with his family. In 1940, at the age of 28, Sullivan joined the National Parks Fire Patrol. He became one of three rangers to monitor the 40-mile area between Waynesboro and Swift Run Gap in the southern area of the park, less than eight miles from where he grew up. In April of 1942, Sullivan was in a fire tower lording over his land when a thunderstorm struck. This was a serious problem owing to the fact that the tower had no form of a lightning rod installed. According to Sullivan himself, he saw lightning strike seven or eight times and the valley engulf in flames. He didn't make it far when he got hit. Besides some burns, the ball created a half-inch stripe down his right leg and caused the nail of his big toe to fall off. Considering that about 80 people die every year from lightning strikes, many would consider Roy Sullivan rather lucky. For further reference, about 10 to 30 percent of people struck by lightning die from it, and according to National Geographic, the odds of a U.S. citizen being struck by lightning during their lifetime is about one in 3,000. These are surprisingly high odds for something that is often used as an example of something that is exceptionally rare. Of course, it should be noted that as a park ranger in Virginia, which typically has 35 to 45 days per year with thunderstorms, the odds of being struck were a bit worse, or better, depending on how you want to look at it, for Mr. Sullivan than the average Joe. As for getting struck by lightning twice, in general, there's around a 1 in 9 million chance of this happening. Roy Sullivan was one of those, and more. The second time Roy Sullivan was struck by lightning didn't happen until 27 years after the first one in July of 1969. A summer storm hit while he was driving his truck on Skyline Drive. After several bolts around his truck, a flash came through his open window, striking him, charring his wristwatch, and burning his eyebrows. While many incorrectly think it is rubber tires that make it safe to sit in a car during a lightning storm, this isn't actually the case at all. Hundreds or thousands of feet of air is a greater insulator than a couple of inches of rubber, and lightning has no trouble with that air barrier. For your reference, air generally has a breakdown voltage of about 20 to 75 kilovolts per inch. Rubber rings in at about 450 to 700 kilovolts per inch. As the lightning will take the easiest path to the ground, you might think from those breakdown voltages, it would still take the path through the 5 to 7 feet of air rather than through an inch or two of rubber after traveling through the very conductive metal frame of your car. However, modern tires are actually designed to act as conductors rather than insulators. This might sound a bit strange at first, but it's because manufacturers don't want static charge to build up too much in your car. So why are cars and trucks usually safe to sit in in a thunderstorm? Essentially, the metal of the car provides an easy path for the lightning to reach the ground, and as long as you're not touching anything metal in the car, you're usually going to be completely fine. We say usually because, of course, there are exceptions, one of which is nicely illustrated by Mr. Sullivan. The problem Roy Sullivan had was that he had his window down. Glass is an excellent insulator, breakdown voltage at about 2,000 to 3,000 kilovolts an inch, which is much greater than even rubber. Had the window been up, it likely have been fine with all of the bolts energy discharged around him instead of some arching inside of the truck. Whatever the case, after his vehicle and he was struck, Sullivan lost consciousness and his truck rolled into a ditch. But he survived. Again, Roy, very lucky here. The third time Roy was struck by lightning, he was at home tending to his garden when a clear sky turned ominous and lightning struck a power transformer nearby. Besides the transformer being hit, Sullivan got a glancing blow to his shoulder. He was knocked down, but the damage was pretty minimal compared to the first two times. By now, Roy was getting nicknames like the Human Lightning Rod and the Spark Ranger. The fourth time he was struck, well, it entered the realm of absurdity. He was manning a station at the Loft Mountain camping area in 1972. As Roy himself described, there was a gentle rain, but no thunder, until just one big clap. The loudest thing I ever heard. The fire was bouncing around inside of the station, and when my ears stopped ringing, I heard something sizzling. It was my hair on fire. After putting out the fire once again, Roy headed off to the hospital for treatment. At this point, Roy's story began attracting national attention. He was interviewed by David Frost, he was on the game show To Tell the Truth, and he was featured in the 1972 Guinness Book of World Records, where, after they verified the strikes, he was given the distinction of the only living man to be struck by lightning 
four times. Lightning Strikes 5, 6, and 7 were all accounts delivered by Roy and never submitted to the Guinness Book of World Records for official verification, as the others had been, so it's possible he made the latter three up, as documented evidence on these is scant. The fifth one supposedly happened again while traveling in his truck in a storm. After he felt the storm had passed, he exited his truck, only to be hit, singeing him pretty good and knocking him to the ground. The sixth time, he claimed he was convinced the storm was following him and out to get him. He was hit, resulting in serious burns on his chest and stomach area. At this point, we can only hope that the local hospital was giving him a bit of a discount on burn treatments, whether the latter instances were really from lightning strikes or not. He retired from the park service in late 1976 and moved with his fourth wife to a town called Dooms. Just to be safe, he went ahead and installed several lightning rods on his home. Unfortunately, he wasn't home when the next lightning strike supposedly happened. He was out fishing. When it is, he once again sustained burns and nearly lost consciousness before picking himself up and heading to the car to go and seek medical treatment. The local media caught wind of it, and in the subsequent interview, Sullivan stated, Some people are allergic to flowers, but I'm allergic to lightning. Even if someone doesn't die from being struck by lightning, health issues can arise and do in about 80% of the survivors. Severe skin burns, singed hair, and paralyzation are just some of the injuries that one can suffer. Memory loss, frontal lobe damage, permanent brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, personality changes, and depression are the consequences of being struck by lightning that might not be apparent right away. And indeed, there were reports from those who knew Sullivan that his mental health was slipping a bit over time, culminating in the events of the night of September 28, nineteen. At some point in the middle of the night, with his wife sleeping next to him, Roy died from a gunshot wound to the head. Police determined that it was self-inflicted. That said, there is some speculation that Roy Sullivan's death was not suicide, but actually murder. Police questioned his wife, his fourth, due to the fact that his death wasn't reported until 9 a.m. and investigators determined that he had been shot at approximately 3 a.m. with his wife asleep in the same room, yet the gunshot supposedly did not wake her. Additionally, family members claim, for what it's worth, that the couple were having marital troubles and, as reported by the Washington Post, Randy Fisher, an officer that was part of the investigation, supposedly said he found Roy bleeding from a single 22 bullet to the head, a contact wound through a pillow. That said, Officer Philip Broadfoot of the local police dismissed all this based on what they found, stating, The family doesn't want it to be suicide. It's hard for people to accept. You've got to put a lot of faith and trust in folks responding to the scene. Either way, a very sad ending. And now for some bonus facts. One of the biggest lightning strike disasters in aviation occurred on December 24, 1971, when Lanza Flight 508 was struck by lightning. Planes are struck by lightning all the time with no problem, but this was not the case for Flight 508. It was ultimately ripped apart and crashed into the Amazon rainforest, killing 91 people. Only one person survived, a 17-year-old girl who, after being thrown from the plane, survived a two-mile freefall. She then trekked through the rainforest for 10 days with no supplies. If you want to learn more about her, please do see our video on that subject, which we are linking to below. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up below. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week, Monday through Sunday. If you want even more from me, I've got another channel where I do daily videos called Top 10s. You will find that linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.